The uh, Jalen Green shine started to, I guess, dim. 9506, only absolute clowns bought into a 15-game run is anything other than a blip. He's not a bum, but still disappointing. 15 games is a lot. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's almost a quarter of the year. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that it's easy to say. You can always criticize him when he's down, but he had two runs this year that were of of substance. He had two substantial amounts of game times were stacked and racked with unbelievable numbers. I, I think I think we're past the 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 bust conversation. Well, that's not what he said though. He said he's not a bum. He just said that it's a blip. That this is that that well okay. That I run. think it, I think he's shown more than a blip. I think he can be an above average NBA player. Well, I mean the conversation. Though, I think the texture can say that too, though. I mean the textures doesn't it didn't say that he's not fine. It's fine. The I'm conversation is it. more is he like your building block? In, yeah. In March he was looking like your building block. We were having a conversation taking him over Shingoon. I still mm-hmm. would. I, I still well, and that's the conversation we, we, we can have. But I mean, he obviously his April numbers have been far off from what he did in March. Yeah, they've been better in Shingoon's though. Well, <laughs> Shingoon's numbers. Um, I don't know. Shingoon hasn't missed a shot. I, I still don't know who he is. I, I, don't, I don't know who Jalen Green is in terms of his status in the NBA. I, I don't know if he's going to be, you know, what we would consider a superstar, a second tier player, a third tier player. Uh, he's still super young, and he's going into the second year of Ime Adoka. I think next year is the make or break year for for Jalen Green. And it, it, obviously, for the Rockets, it has to be because contractually, you, you either have to pay him or he can walk. But when you look at it, I think he can be. He's an, he's an above average NBA player. Now, is that on a bad team? Because th- it's easy for a lot of guys. He can play in this league. He's shown me enough that I believe, from a basketball perspective, he can play in this league. I think everybody would say that, though. Like, I, I don't think mm, that that's... there were some people when he was really bad early in the season that were starting. I'm, I'm to talking question. about having this conversation now. I don't think there's anybody in the world that right now would be like, yeah, Jalen Green's not an NBA player. No, but a lot of people are talking about him as a max guy, and that's 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 a huge difference. And I know that's what I'm getting to. So. My belief is is that he's he's an above average player in this league. But if the Rockets are the team that has to make, and they're the only team that can make the decision, do are we going to franchise him, max max him out, sign him, or are we going to do something with him? I, I don't think that that's a decision set in stone by any means yet. I, I think that's Same. that that's something that they really are going to have to contemplate starting with this off season. And, and uh, you know, a month ago I was saying, look, good coaches can find a way to exploit the the best offensive capabilities of a big like Shen Goon, and a wing like Jalen Green. I don't think you have to make that decision yet, but that time's coming real quick in this offseason, I think, is where it starts. I don't think you have to do this offseason, No, though, it's right? where it starts. You have to consider what you're going to do. I mean, I because, don't want to nitpick it, but I think you start the evaluation when you like bring in a guy for the very first time. But like, you don't have to make that decision. Sure, the evaluation's always going on. But I've seen always the discord, like, we got to sign on this off. No, you don't. Like, he's still no. under contract right. for next year, and then he's a restricted free agent after that where you can match any sort of deal. So you're not necessarily in this, like, huge rush to get something done. No, it's it's about you either value him or you got to get value for him. And when is the final time you can do that with him? And I think that that's why it's a real critical offseason because you have seen better from him, but you've seen a very uneven sample size. So what do you have, and when do you need to make that final determination? I think this offseason is when they start thinking about it hard because you want to, if you don't want them, you got to get something for them. But I think the convers- I think the like the real question though is when is the deadline? Because like who cares when you're starting that process? The, the the real thing is, and like we know, the deadlines spur action, right? So like when is the deadline of when you have to make a decision on your long term plans for Jalen Green? <laughs> To me, the to me the safe answer is the trade deadline next season. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I would have a little bit different answer, but I don't hate that answer. Like that yeah, answer's because, fine with me. Well, because you could still you still conceivably can keep him and, and get into that that uh, that option year. Yeah. Well, next year is the club exercise option, and that the year after that's when he's a restricted so the restricted free agent. Free agency, but you could also that. do sign and trade stuff. Right. Like you could you could lock it up and then trade him. So like he doesn't lose all value if he no. plays the entire season with you next year. But if he plays badly next year, then the, the value continues to go down. This offseason, he's shown enough where I think he still has substantial value in the league. Mm-hmm. That's why I think you got to start the evaluation clock, the hard evaluation clock, as soon as the season's over. If you didn't have Emei in his first year, and this was like Emei's, this was like, let's just say Emei was the head coach for Jalen Green his entire career, his entire NBA career. I think that you can make the argument that you should make the decision this offseason. Mm-hmm. Because, okay, let's either you're paying him or you're trading him. But because it's the first year of Ime Adoka, that's why I want to see what Jalen Green looks like next year. 
Okay, but why? I mean, because because I, he's he's finally been coached, and I want to see what he does in the off season after finally having a real coach. Yeah, I was thinking about it from the Adoka perspective of you know if he had been in the been with him the entire time and he'd been in the league for a couple of years, you know what he wants, you know what he expects. I think he'd already his development have, will be further along, and he'd also probably already have made his decision, cut and dried. He but, may, yeah, oh no doubt, yeah for sure. So yeah, look, I, I think, but I think obviously because he, he may is going to be here for quite a while that he's going to have the the biggest critique and he's going to have the biggest say-so in the room in terms of, yeah, I want another year with this guy or I believe that we can still get more out of him. Or, you know, if he's done with them, I think they'll start they'll start looking long and hard on what to do. It's 4 6 3 one Shingun played as a top-five center for three-fifths of the season. He's a better asset than Jalen. Guards are easier to obtain. I agree that guards are easier to obtain. I think a lot of times... Our opinion, fans' opinions on players are 95% driven on what they do on the offensive end. Oh, for sure. I, I don't think that we put nearly as much weight on the defensive side of the ball. Alpi Shingun offensively agreed as a top five, seven center in the NBA for three fifths of the season. Also true, Alpi Shingun is a defensive liability. I would say he went from liability to a less than average defender. I don't know that he's completely as much of a liability as he was under Silas. He started to understand some concepts and some switching and some things, but he can't move his feet, and laterally, he's dead in the water. And, and so in today's NBA, unless you're playing some of those top five centers offensively that are low post-based guys, he, he's tough. To, he, he's a tough guy to, to believe can guard anybody one-on-one. Yeah, seven one three seven eight zero ESPN one nine five three. I want to see how he does in the playoffs. We seen what Harden did. The issue with that is you might not have the opportunity. Come on, Green. Yeah, if Jalen Green is under contract next year, final year of his club, you know, exercised option, restricted free agent after that. If the Rockets don't make the playoffs next season, then we're not going to have the opportunity to see what Jalen Green does in the playoffs before you do have that deadline on what you decide to do with him. That's why this run was so important because there were games that mattered late down the stretch where whether it was a playoff game officially or not, they were do or die situations for you. And so you started to see some of that because you're right. There's there's a chance. There's a, I don't like to say a pretty good chance, but there is a legit chance that he, you never see him play a playoff game for the Rockets. So you've got to start making that overall evaluation right now. And you take the everything that you've seen this season, you start talking to Adoka and, and the coaches and, and looking around the league, too, and seeing, hey, with the run that he had, people were starting to value him higher again. Where's he at value-wise? Where do we value him? What do we think? And then you got to start making some hard calls. Yeah. Um, both agree it's next year. Say again. Not something you do in the offseason. Say one more. I didn't, my, we my, both agree that that deadline's next year, not something you do in the offseason. Oh, I think it's possible you could do it in the offseason. I, I I wouldn't, but I think that there's a there's a chance that they do something this offseason. I, I think know. that I, I just think that Udoka is one of those guys that is kind of more focused on veterans that he doesn't have to work so hard to coach because he can trust. I don't think that he has that trust built up. That's why I'm saying it's really going to be on Udoka's shoulders to say, no, nah, I still believe there's more to get out of him that I can get out of him that we can you that he's going to be a guy we build around. Or if Udoka is hell bent on getting a veteran. I think they could pull the plug this offseason. What are you basing that off of, though, that, that he's once more veteran than, than younger players he's developing? I mean, it, it, whether you believe the Brooklyn rumors or not, there was conversations internally where he was more focused on getting guys that can help him win now and in the next year to two years as opposed to taking or sticking with guys that are going to still take a couple years to develop. I, I haven't seen an action that says that other than spending money in free agency. I'm talking about the conversation. There's the con I haven't seen those. So no. that's why I'm only speaking on what I've seen. Right, and I'm only speaking on what I've been told. Right. And, and, the con and so from the conversation standpoint, I still think that there is a notion with him that he would rather have some, not just, you know, Jeff Green, Fred Van Vliet, and and Dylan Brooks, but there there are, there's a guy maybe a little younger but still, with NB, has his NBA resume together that would that he was more intrigued by. Seven one three seven eight zero ESPN. By the way, I think the Rockets are halfway to being a playoff team. They finished their home record on the year, twenty seven and fourteen. Twenty seven and fourteen is better home record than Dallas, who's in fifth, New Orleans, who's in sixth, Phoenix, who's in seventh, Sacramento, who's in eighth, half game behind LA, who's in ninth, and a better record than Golden State, who's twenty and nineteen, who's in tenth place. If the Rockets are just halfway decent at, on the road next year, they're a playoff team. If they were halfway decent on the road this year, let's see, they were 12-26, and 26, so they were seven-game difference. So they went seven more games at, on the road, and they were just 19-19, and 19, just a 500 record on the road. 
that would give them up to 46 wins. 46 wins right now would be tied for seventh place in the Western Conference and one game back in the sixth. Yeah, the sixth look, for the sixth seed. The batter's eye on the road has been really difficult in the NBA this year. Mm. I, I, I think that that's the sign of an immature team. Uh, an immature team that can't go on the road and get wins, but I think that there's enough talent, and I think that what they experienced this, this last run down the stretch, I think they're a team that's going to win 46 games next year. They were way better uh, last month on the road. Sure they they won more games in the last month on the road than they did prior, the entire season prior to the last month of the year.